everybody. Rob Hanlon, American National Insurance. I almost hit my friend Kern uh, Dillard over here. I'm pretty quick, though. Got it out of the way. <laughs> hey, we're back on the show. Um, been uh, a little busy going on, and uh, we said we'd have a special announcement. So Kern Dillard is here from Kern's Automotive. He is our new sponsor for the show. Yeah. So I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Yeah. Happy to be a part of it. going to be a fun time. We're going to talk about your business today oh, since you're our sponsor. Okay. And, I appreciate uh, that. Get some uh, get some info out there to you, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap up and talk about some of the car shows that are coming up. Um, I know you're a big car buff and like yeah. Uh, yeah. to look at those collector yeah. cars. So I do enjoy it. Um, so we're going to kick off the show and talk to Kern, talk a little bit about his business. So Kern is with... Kearns Automotive up on Canyon Road, and uh, you've been in the business a long time. Yes, I have. A long time. Yeah, and, and you've been and in the same location for a long time. In the same location for, we're coming up on our 20-year anniversary here. We've been on out there on Canyon Road for 20 years. That's a long time to yeah. be in one spot. Yeah. How many different businesses have you seen come and gone in your 20 years since you've been there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I lost count. <laughs> uh, things have changed quite a bit, though. We've, yeah. We've, the road has improved. The traffic volume and speed has come up. Yeah. So my goal right now is to slow them down and let them, hey, the new guys that are driving by need to notice that we're there. you got to get one of those guys that go out and spin the sign. Way, like Kearns Automotive and wait stuff. Wait till Friday. Yeah. Oh, you're going to? Oh, okay. All right. Drive by Friday. i got to come in and get my oil change. Okay. So, um. Yeah, so you've been there a long time. You have um, some really cool things going on that you do with your customers in regards to maintenance and keeping their cars on the road. That is true. We do stress the maintenance side of things. We try to make sure that you're taken care of. Um, specifically, what what do you want to get out of your vehicle? We want to longevity, help you get that. Right. If you want yeah. longevity, we'll help you get that. If you yeah. want to trade it in in six months, we'll help you do that too. But there's there's a couple different ways we can maintain it and uh, keep your warranty intact. So if you've got a new car and you're changing the oil, doing the tire rotations and, and keeping up on the fluid services, that will keep your warranty valid at the new car dealer. And there's a few advantages to that. Yeah. That, that we're independent eyes looking at your vehicle, uh, a new car, newer car. While they're still under warranty, uh, we can help you get the most value out of your warranty, see things that are coming up, and you know, kind of guide you through the car ownership of a new car. So if somebody buys uh, a new car to them but a used car, right. and they buy a um, warranty, you guys can work with those warranties those, in those some cases? Those extended warranties, most of them we do, we are able to work with. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, you know, the the car itself, we're able to work with that all along, you know, do the oil changes and, and maintenance, uh, brakes, tire rotation, all of the stuff that wouldn't be covered by their warranty. We can definitely help them out with that. Mm -hmm. But if there's something that's covered under their extended warranty that um, they don't notice, we're noticing there's something starting to fail, we can help them guide them through that and get the get back to the servicing dealer to, to help them uh, get that repaired. And usually, it, you know, they've already paid for it. So right, right. whether they pay a small deductible or pay some f other fees, but it's, it's. But they generally don't have to go to a dealer to get that work for done the maintenance, generally. Yeah. For all the maintenance yeah. and service, uh, yeah. it can be done at a qualified independent shop. Okay. Like ours. Okay. Is there any, and you guys do a lot of stuff at your shop. Is there anything that you really don't work on, like maybe transmissions or something like that? Uh, actually, we did start off as a transmission oh, shop. Oh, you did? So, okay. So opened that up years ago, and uh, I got my start as a transmission guy. I was a builder, so I picked up transmissions wholesale and did the build on the bench and brought them back to the transmission shops, and they would install them. So that was that's how I got my the, start in this, this – uh, uh, independent business, and then uh, so transmissions are right in our right in our yeah. comfort zone. We're we're able to diagnose, test them. We don't build them in house anymore. Yeah. So we do um, buy them out, and usually buy them with the best warranty we can find. And oh, nice. You know, help help the customer out. Help help you yeah. out, and you know, figure out the cause of the failure too. Right. So we're not just building a unit. We're we're 
looking at the whole car as a whole. So, so let's back up a little bit and let's go back to kind of what got you into opening your own shop. You said you did some work on transmissions way back when. Mm-hmm. Um, is that kind of how you first started getting into this, or or were you like as a young kid? Um, you were a big car buff, and that was just something that you wanted to get into because that uh, was your happy place. Yeah, it was. A happy, it was. A, it's always been a happy place for me. You know, we just. Uh, I, my, some of my early memories are hanging out with my dad in the driveway yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, maintaining, helping him maintain the car. And I don't even really know what we did. I just knew I was with my dad and we yeah. were out working on the car in the driveway and, and uh, you know, probably changing oil, air filters, those kind of things. Yeah. I know dad did spark plugs and stuff. Uh, we did have some old Barracudas and things nice that cars. I remember. Yeah. And, uh you know, old Pontiac station wagon, a few other, few other old <laughs> oldies that were, that I kind of jar my memory as I, yeah. as I'm, you know, rolling along. But that's those are my early memories, and it was it was always been fun and challenging to be in the car business. Yeah. So even through high school, I was working on my buddies' cars and, you know, helping them get their stuff put together. Yeah. Um, you know, we weren't. Uh, uh, I didn't have the hot rods, but I was yeah. working on them for my buddies. Did yeah. you have a favorite car when you were growing up, or or <clears throat> what was your what was your favorite car growing up, and what was your first car that you got when you started driving? Those are two questions. Okay, <laughs> uh, I, uh, <laughs> maybe the same car in that que- in both uh, those questions. Uh, well, I didn't get the the dream car was probably a '68 Chevelle. That was a nice uh, car. Really liked it. Uh, one of my buddies, he was a family car of his and he was able to drive that to high school and it was pretty pretty neat so uh had another guy with a gto that was a it was pretty pretty special but that back in the day the car wasn't so yeah uh, so good but yeah i mean so valuable i guess is the the word but uh, uh today it's off the charts, man. Those, those things are cool. <laughs> yeah, they're all over if, the place. If, if they're if they're still in good shape yeah. and still around, it, you know, you get what you, whatever you want to, whatever you want for them. If yeah, you want to sell it. So. My when I was growing up, my dad had a '68 Impala. Okay, it's burgundy. Neat. And I wish we still had it because uh-huh. it would be a classic right now. Mm-hmm. But I can't remember what what happened to it. I think he traded it in on like a a Buick or something when we, cause we, I grew up on the East coast and we moved back out here and I think we drove that car out here and then he traded it in on like a Buick or something like that. Or no, he had a Toyota. Yeah. He had a Toyota. Cause my first car that I got when I graduated high school was a 1978 Toyota Corolla hatchback. Wow. And he gave it to me, handed me the keys. The first thing I did was go out and get new black mags for it. And I, I drove that thing in the ground, man. It had like 325,000 miles. So was that your favorite it. car? It had to be because it was my only car. My only car. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, my first car was a pickup or a flatbed. It yeah. was a 66 Ford F-250 without a bed. It had a flatbed on it. So I bought it thinking, man, I can, I can make a little bit extra money and be sure. able to afford to do something nice. So I uh, found a place where I could buy firewood and then resell it. So <laughs> Right was, on the back <laughs> of the truck. I was, I was hauling firewood <laughs> uh, you know, along with the... Uh, Working in the gas station, so and did that get you into hauling the transmissions too? When you had that truck, or that that, that was that, come that was long, long that was gone long before I did that. <laughs> <laughs> now you're not originally from Washington. Uh, actually, I am. You are. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. you spent some time you're, in California. Well, I was right? born in I was born in Seattle. Okay. I was born at the UW. Okay. My dad was a student there, so my brothers and I were born there, and moved to Southern California. Spent some time in Denver, grade school time in Denver, and place I call home is Sunnyvale, California, yeah. Bay Area. Nice, so that's a nice area down yeah, there. Grew up, you know, in a nice, nicer place, nicer neighborhood, and uh, came up here. So when you came up here, was that when you got the idea that you wanted to start your own shop? I kind of always Working had for that, somebody else. I always had that tickling yeah. around in my head, you yeah. know. Uh, I always liked the older cars. I liked cars that people really liked. I found pretty quickly that I didn't like working on cars that people didn't like. If you don't like your car, 
and I'm trying to fix it. It's like, this is like like work or something. Do people not like their car because it doesn't run or they have problems with or it? They, if they come in saying they hate it, it's, right. it's like, you're not my guy. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fix your car. <laughs> because Go take it somewhere you're else. You're still going to hate you're gonna hate me because I worked on your car that you hate. And now, <laughs> now I extended the life of something that you hate. So right. Hey, and now they're going to hate you. They're going to continue to hate you. It's not good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just that nothing good comes of that. So, so if you like your car, we'll help you out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And so I think I went way around your we, question. You did go way around my question, but we came right back I, to I it. I feel like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that time of year yet, Kern, so you're going to have to wait hey, until you know November. They, you know they sneak in those votes all year round? Do they really? They, they, you get these things in the mail that says yeah. vote, 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 and then pretty soon you're chucking it. And Oh, yeah, I should have voted for that, and now my taxes went garbage. up. <laughs> Except when the taxes go up, yes, then I get angry. So, anyway. They, Which draws us back to the original question, but you answered that. What was your first car? You answered that, or your favorite car growing up. You answered that. Okay, I got that. And then the, your first car, but it wasn't actually a car. It was a pickup. Yes. A flatbed. Yes. And you were going to chop wood and sell it on the back of the well, flatbed. I, I, actually, right? I found a place. We were – I. It was kind of in the city there, so yeah. there, I found a wood lot where the guy had a bunch of wood, yep. and he was selling it off the lot. So I would go buy it from him and then resell it in the neighborhood. Were you making a profit? A little bit. Enough to buy gas and beer. <laughs> <laughs> that was the important thing back then. <laughs> what? <laughs> so when you, you were in Denver, or you were in Colorado, yes. you are in California, and then when you came back to Washington, is that when you started getting yes, the idea? Yes, yes. That... Uh, well, I've, I've had the idea all, all along that I should be – I wanted to work for myself. But uh, always had the security of working in a dealership, had the skills and the ability yeah. to make really good money working in new car dealers and, and just uh, dealing with the vehicles and yeah. not necessarily the people, but yeah. just, just the vehicles. And um, – so from my teens through 30s, yeah. I was working for dealers, new car dealers, and making really decent money yeah. and, and having a good time with it. Moved up to uh, Washington in 1989. You just dated yourself. 88. <laughs> 1988, uh, worked for the Cadillac dealer up in Bellevue. And okay. I, I had actually come up from Sacramento. I moved to Sacramento with my family, and then mom and dad had moved up here. They sold the Sunnyvale house and moved up here. This is home for them. So I came up to visit and decided I'd look for work and found lots of opportunity here in Washington. That was 30 years ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah, 30-something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm wow, well, I'm coming up on my high school reunion. I graduated eighty six, so not that that matters, well, but you know. Yeah. So you 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 came back up here. You were working for a dealer for mm -hmm. a while. Did 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 you get to the point where you were getting frustrated, or did you just, just say, you know, enough I, of this? I think I, just, I can do better. I just thought I could do better. Yeah. I thought I could move out and do better. I saw the the warranty. We, we briefly touched on the warranty thing. Yeah. Uh, as I was a, a dealer tech, I was a I would point out all these issues with the cars sure. as they're coming up to the end of the warranty. Uh, we couldn't keep the warranties. Uh, how, how do I say that? Uh, the uh, Trying to keep the warranty costs down, those, mm. those warranty situations weren't presented to the customers. So they would wait until they were out of warranty, then present it, then they would end up paying for, oh, the, wow. for the work. So if they didn't complain about it, yeah. the, the cars, they don't know any better. They're sure. driving along. And we just They rely on the dealer to tell they, them what to do. They rely yeah. on that. So um, that was the case years ago. I've you know, been out of, the, out of the dealer loop for a long time. So I've been enjoying uh, being independent and being able to service people and take care of their 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 needs and help them get the best value out of their vehicles yeah um you know if they have a warranty we'll we'll guide them back to the dealer and say hey you need to talk about this this is a problem and you know help them get the best value out of their warranty too right right so it's all mechanics all all cool stuff but 
I am not mechanically inclined. That's why I leave it to you to work on on the vehicles. Right. I you know sidebar. I just do the cooking. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming over to my place to cook. Yeah, here yeah. Soon. We're gonna have right. a throwdown. Your uh, current sister uh, has uh, thrown out a challenge to me. It's kind of a little little off the topic, but oh, I thought we'd go. share. Let's it, do right? it. You're currently uh, remodeling your house. You're, well, you're not remodeling, but you're fixing the kitchen. some things that happened during a couple yeah. storms and whatnot. And you're doing your kitchen. So yeah. um, your sister challenged me to a throwdown. Mm-hmm. And so once your kitchen is done, we're coming over to your place. We're going to do a throwdown. Okay. But you have well, to I'll pick be, the I'll ingredient. Be, I'll be eating well, though. You will be eating well. <laughs> That's good. She has a way of inviting people. To my she, ha- she has a having... happy way of inviting a lot of people <laughs> I'm having all a, the time. I'm, I'm having a surprise party at your house. <laughs> right? I remember, I remember when she did that. That was funny. Yeah. So uh, so we're going to have a throwdown at Kearns once his kitchen's all done. So Yeah, you're so, all invited. Uh, everybody come out to Kearns. We're not going to tell you where it is. You just have to guess and figure it out yourself. How about that? There you go. So, hey, Kern, how, uh, if somebody wants to come out to your shop, get an oil change or get an estimate done, where can they go? How can they, they reach They can you? find us on the web at kernsauto.com or give us a call at 253-538-1441. Best two ways to get a hold of us. And email? Email service at kernsauto.com. Well, the best way is just pick up the phone and call. Pick up the phone and call. Yeah, it's you, during work hours. That's the the best way to connect. So, and you guys are open Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, eight to five thirty, and sometimes we'll sneak out a little early on Friday, <laughs> <laughs> just because of the weekend. <laughs> just because. Yeah, and and if you guys are are familiar with uh, the group Ignite You. Kern and I are, are part of that group, and if you want to come out and join us on Tuesdays from 11.30 to 1 at the Great American Casino, and Friday mornings from 7.30 to 9 at the Great American Casino, we'd love to have you as a guest. Yeah. Just tell them uh, you saw the podcast with uh, Rob and Kern and come out and see us. So let's talk about your book, or did you want to hit something else first? The book's fine. Okay. Don't hit me. Cool. We can oh. hit something else. <laughs> Well, you did, so, bring, you did bring the target. Well, you know, I, this you know this is my signature now, you know, because, uh, well, we'll just yeah. leave it at that. How about right. that? You know? right. It's not you football can... season, so I'm not going to go there. All but right. I do have bragging rights this year, and that's yeah, all I'm going to say. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> so let's talk about the book you wrote, because um, with all the warranties and things like that that you service and things, this is a really good book to give people really a lot of informed information if they don't know really the, let's say the, the one Oh one of taking care of your car. Yeah. It's right? really what I did is I, I looked in the glove box and most of the owner's manuals never come out of that nice little leather sleeve that no, they mine's put them still in. in mine. Yeah. 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 So I said, well, what are the really down and dirty basic things that people need to know? And I just started writing stuff that I, thought were really common to me yeah and uh somewhere along the line somebody suggested i write a book and i said okay there you go found some help and i came up with this and And now and now we can get it on amazon and it's i was just gonna ask you where we could get that yeah there's a kindle version of it up there too there is really if you do kindle oh man (laughs) So, I think my wife still has a Kindle. I'm going to have to ask her yeah, about that and see. I, I, yeah, I think there's a free version of Kindle you can put on your phone or something. But it's <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, just something I did. I was thumbing through it the other day thinking, man, things have changed in the last five or six years. Uh, we used to recommend 3,000-mile oil changes. Yeah. And now I think 3,000 miles is pretty outdated. Yeah. Uh, most what of would them you are say? four to 5,000 miles. There we miles. go. Okay. And uh, some of the newer cars with the new oils, as long as you're using the right oil and the right filter, they're going 10,000 miles. It's a little scary for yeah. an old-timer like me to say, yeah. go 10,000 miles without changing your oil. But the cars are doing it. The oil monitors are working, and it's it seems to be you know, the, the quality of the oil. and the. So you guys do things a little bit differently than the – um, <clears throat> the the quick drive in oil change places. I'm not going to name names on that, but mm-hmm. um, in my opinion, I think 
you're getting better quality with what you're doing with your oil changes and the level of uh, product you're putting into the vehicles. Right. But we definitely, you know, an oil change, we're there to do a good inspection on your vehicle mm-hmm. as well. Make sure that you're you're good to go for another four months before we see you again. So uh, we don't want you calling with an emergency situation. So we're 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 looking that right. over as well. Right. We're, we're looking the vehicle over. We're doing a sixty three point inspection. That's kind of standard for us when your vehicle comes in the shop. And uh, does everybody do like a sixty three point inspection? Or is that some something of, that you guys just yeah we we st- we started adding up all of the things we're looking mm-hmm. for and looking at and you know i start with a road test unless it's mm-hmm. not safe to do it but we do take a road test and you know get a feel for what we're what we're working with that gets the oil all warmed up so we get all of it out and and get everything changed properly uh, make sure we're using the right fluids mm-hmm. uh, like i said the ten thousand mile oil you can't just use any oil for that you've got to use the right quality the right right brand um it's got to have all of the specs on it to to make it that far so the more miles you have on your car you really need to look at a specialty type of oil for the high mileage type of vehicles is that really the case um there are some extra additives in the high mileage Mm -hmm. oils that's good uh good to use yeah what about like with fuel injection i mean is that something that people should be concerned about most of the time or if they just put like a fuel injection additive in there you know from fred meyer or something Uh, you know when you go and fill up at fred meyer they do that little video thing and go did you know you could well if if you i've got a little bit of fuel speech (laughs) (laughs) now that brings me to my next question kern so oh really i I follow your facebook page you're gonna jump into my little fuel talk i am gonna jump into your fuel talk because you said it okay and i i it was in the back of my mind and i thought I want to ask you about that. So, since that was a perfect segue, okay, we're going well, to talk well, about it's, the... it's perfect because you said it, you did it, and you're calling it perfect. There so there you go. All right, uh, right you're on. perfect. It's, it's Kurt. your show. You're perfect. <laughs> but you're the sponsor, so okay. All right. Okay, so when you're going to, and I fill up at Costco all the time, right? Okay? And when I see the fuel truck there, I never thought about what you actually mentioned. In your video on your Facebook page. Yeah, why I don't stop when yes. I see the fuel truck. Yes. Can you... <laughs> this is pretty cool, actually, because I never really thought about this when he mentioned it uh, yeah. on his Facebook page. Okay, well, if there's any dirt or debris or anything in that big tank, they've got a big tank underground, and that you know the load from that fuel tanker gets dumped in there. Yeah. So what it's going to do is anything that's in the tank, sediment, moisture, uh anything that wasn't mixed properly is all going to come up off the bottom, get stirred into the fuel and get pumped out in the next, you know, next half hour or so. So you want to, for me, I like to wait. If I see the fuel truck, whether he's just dropped his load in the, in the ground or if he's, he's, you know, it's, it's kind of a thought process. I don't know if there's fact in that, but (laughs) back a few years ago, we used to have a lot of fuel problems. Yeah. Now I don't see a lot of fuel problems in the in the cars. In the fuel filters don't plug up like we used to have. But it's but, just because better technology. I think so. Okay. But but still, that's ingrained in me. Is if I yeah. see a fuel truck, I'm driving to the next gas station. Oh, uh, gotcha. So you're not going to sit around and wait and just watch the guy fill up the tanks and then hey he's done i'm just gonna pull up and get my gas now oh, he splashes it and everything's all all emulsified and stirred up and i just i just prefer not to <laughs> maybe i'm picky i'm gonna remember that now every time i see a uh, so, tank so, truck pull up so all these gas stations they they starve for about an hour and a half after the truck goes by well, if my light's on empty, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to say, sometimes, hey, well, Kern told me to go to the next one, even though I'm going to run out of gas. So Sometimes you just have to take your chances. Huh? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. So you wrote a book. Yes. You got your own shop. Yeah. Um, what is your, let's talk about what you like to do in your spare time when you're not at the shop doing stuff. So, uh, well, that would be, I, lately I like working on my house. It's been kind of fun. It's challenging. It's interesting. It's uh, working with wood and yeah. paint and 
stuff that I've never, I mean, I've done it before, but it's just kind of cool. It's, yeah. it's a different type of work. So I've been, I've been enjoying that a little bit. And then, and then watching the contractors do their part too. Sitting back, they're, they're, having they're, a beer, <laughs> kicking back. They're, they're pretty smart, man. Those guys, those guys really, really <laughs> rock and roll when they get to work. And, uh, other than that, uh, before I had started this house project, yeah. I loved to fish. I probably weekly get out somewhere, some river somewhere, and uh, fish for salmon when they're around, yep. steelhead when they're around, and I like the trout. And Are you fly fishermen or just I'm regular reels? Just learning to fly. Yeah. Just just going I could out never get that down. figuring that out yeah. and it's it's been fun yeah I've, and i've caught a few have you uh, gone out this year already a couple times not not much where's your favorite place to fish probably along the cowlitz river there's a there's a few spots on there that i just frequent haven't been down this year though biggest fish you ever caught i don't know I got to think about that one. <laughs> you got to think about that one. Last year got a nice little sturgeon. Well, it wasn't too big, but yeah. it was keepable. Those are like dead fish almost when you're reeling them in, aren't they? No, this one flew. Did he it really? He was out of the water. Oh, wow. Tail tail hopping. And it, yeah. it, was, it was a fun one. I um, When I was 13, my sister and brother-in-law took me down the, the Willamette. I can't even pronounce it. The Willamette River. Right. And I caught a five and a half foot sturgeon. Wow. It took me a long time to bring that in, but yeah. I was thirteen years old. You know, yeah. I didn't have a whole. It lot was of as strength. big as you. It was, yeah. So, so we're getting uh, about to that point. Where we're going to wrap up the show. Um, current again. How can people contact you if they want to come in for an oil change? Yeah. Um, one thing we were going to talk about is um, there's a car show coming up this weekend. Yeah. Down at the um, Fife. Larson Cadillac. Okay. We're going to have bands and food and, you know, uh, games and all that kind of stuff. So if you're not doing anything this weekend, come on down and say hello. Plan on hanging out for a few minutes yeah. or come down and see you guys. And Absolutely. See what you're up to. So if, if, if anybody comes down to the car show this weekend at Larson Cadillac in Fife and they walk up to the booth, we're going to have a $25 gift certificate for them. And they we have can do that. To, yeah, and so they have to mention yeah. they heard the podcast in order to get that. Right. And then they can bring it to your shop for $25 that, off any service. That'll be cool. That'll awesome. Be cool. Looking awesome. forward to it. That way we know you listened. Exactly. Exactly. So come on out to the car show. Uh, we're going to be with Bracket Stars this weekend for the um, car show down in um, uh, Larson Cadillac and Fife. There's going to be a live band, barbecue, food, games, prizes, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, we've got another car show coming up June 29th, which is going to be at uh, Pacific Raceway. It's going to be the Northwest Nostalgia Drags. And then we've got another show coming up with Bracket Stars on August 1st, the NHRA uh, Nationals. Then we've got one August 10th, the Hot Rod Jam in Enumclaw. And then our last one to kick off cruising the fall of September 7th in Enumclaw. So... Kern, I want to nice. thank you for being our new sponsor. You're welcome. And we're going to see you um, quite a few times during our, our podcast for the months coming okay. up. I'm and looking uh, forward to continue it. Continue to looking do forward to it. Do your good work and yeah. uh, work on those cars and keep people happy and running on the road. Yes. So that's what we do. Thanks again. I really appreciate right. it. It's been a been a fun fun half hour. Well, twenty eight minutes or so, but you know, we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kern. Appreciate it. All right, it. Rob. Thank All right, you. we'll see you guys next week. Thank Come down you. to the car show and see us. Larson Cadillac in Fife. Car Kern will be there for a little while. Come see him. Tell him you heard the podcast and you get a $25 off any service that he's doing. So come down and Excellent. see us this weekend. Excellent. 9 a.m. 9 to 3 p.m. You guys have a great week. We'll see you later.